Hi! Once again, welcome to another video. For those who didn't know me, let me introduce myself. Hello, I am Jelame Bolo. I am a senior high school teacher of SNDMIS. SNDMIS stands for Sultanaga de Mumpora Memorial Integrated School in Lanao del Norte Division. And welcome to 21st Century Literature from the Philippines to the World, part three no it's actually part four so the first video that we have talks about the pre-colonial types of literature the second one we have the colonial period and the third one we have the american colonial literature and today we're going to be talking about the japanese colonial literature and also we are going to be featuring one story here in this era so stick around all right let us discuss what is what are the literature that existed now this is the historical background the warriors 1942 to 1945 set back the development of philippine literature in english why because the Japanese government doesn't want the writers to write in English, but instead they wanted the writers to write in Filipino. The Japanese conquerors discouraged the use of English. Moreover, freedom of speech and freedom of the press was denied. There was no freedom of speech during that time and also there was no freedom of the press. However, there are two newspaper that was allowed and these are these are um l l the tribune and the philippine review so these are the only uh, literature that is in english and during this time uh we will notice that there were just a very few kinds of literature in english because <laughs> A lot of writers are not actually focusing on what they should write, but instead they are focusing on what is happening around them, which are wars and famine and uh, calamity. So everything that is happening around them, they're more focused on that instead of their writing. But that doesn't mean there, there were no uh, literature during this time, as you can see, as we will know later on. All right, so let us proceed. So Juan Laya, do you know Juan Laya? Uh, Juan Laya actually wrote a novel, which is his native soil. Now his native soil is written in English and Juan Laya used to write literatures in English. So now that he has no, uh, now that he has no control over it, um, he turned all of his writing to Filipino. All right, so Liwayway, which is the oldest magazine in the Philippines, placed under strict surveillance until it was managed by a Japanese named Ishiwara. So this, that is the Japanese named Ishiwara. So that only tells us that there is no freedom of speech and freedom of the press because everything is controlled by the government. All right, but despite of all of that, there are still literature that flourish during this time mostly filipino literature so we have filipino literature in the japanese colonial period so um, there are filipino poetry and most of the filipino poetry common themes are the following we have nationalism love of the country life in the barrio and love as well as religion so you will see in our featured story for today that love of the country, nationalism, life of the barrio were actually being highlighted, as we can see. So there, are, during this time, there are three types of poetry, namely haiku, that's number one, number two, tanaga, and number three, karaniwang anyo, karaniwang anyo. So we have haiku, tanaga, and karaniwang anyo. So let's first discuss what is haiku. Haiku, it was made up of 17 syllables, 
divided into three lines. So we have to you have to remember that haiku is very concise, very short, and it is divided only with three lines. The first line has five syllables, the second is seven, and the third five. So five, seven, five, total of 17 syllables. Let's have a few examples. All right, so this is haiku by Gonzalo K. Flores. So we have tutupi. Tutupi. All right, let's read it first. Hila mo'y tabak ang bulaklak nanginig sa paglapit mo. Now let's count. Ang bulaklak nanginig. Seven. Sa paglapit mo. Five. So five, seven, five. Total of 17 syllables. That is a haiku. Very short, very concise. Anyaya or invitation. Let's read. Ulilang damo sa tahimik na ilog. Halika sinta. Ulilang damo. Five. Sa tahimik na ilog. Seven. And halika sinta. That's five. So, seven. No, five, seven, five. Five, seven, five. That is haiku. Alright, so let's proceed to tanaga. So what is tanaga? Like the haiku, it is short, but it had measure and rhyme. Each line has seven syllables and it also has allegorical and meaning. So we have an example here of tanaga. Mi Edelfonso Santos. This was published on October 10, 1943. In the magazine Liwayway. So let's have Palay. Palay siyang matino. Nang humangi yumuko. Ngunit muling tumayo. Nagkabunga ng ginto. Palay siyang matino. Mayo. That's seven. And the last line. Nagkabunga ng ginto. That is seven. So four lines. Seven syllables each line. Four lines, seven syllables each line. And we and then we have another example of Tanaga. Kapibi, ano ka ba? May perlas, maganda ka. Kung idiit sa tenga, nagbubuntong hininga. So if you're going to notice, Kabibi, ano ka ba? May perlas, maganda ka. Kung idi it sa tainga, nagbubuntong hininga. So there is seven. There are seven syllables in each line. So this is tanaga. Four lines and seven syllables in each line. Alright, let's proceed to the last part. We have karaniwang anyo or the usual form. It is the usual and common form of poetry. What is the common form of poetry? We have one stanza that is equivalent to four lines. One stanza, four lines. That is common form of poetry. That is the type of poetry that we have during the Japanese colonial period. Let's have a review first. Haiku, it is made up of how many syllables? Yes, you're right. Okay, let's see if you can still remember what we have discussed. Haiku. How many syllables? Very good. We have 17 that is divided into three. The first one is five. The second is seven. And then the last one is five. Five, seven, five. Total of 17 syllables. And then we have tanaga, which is like the haiku. It has four lines and seven syllables in each line. And we have the karaniwa anyo or usual form. Four lines, one stanza. Okay, are we good? No more questions? Good, let's proceed to the next part. All right, now let's proceed to Filipino drama during the Japanese colonial period. All right, so we have famous and well-known translators during this time, Francisco Soc Rodrigo and Alberto Concho. We have um, Narciso Pimentel, and together the three of them founded the Dramatic Philippines Organization. We have notable playwrights during this time, 
um, the play is Panday Pera, which is written by Jose Maria Hernandez and Sapula Sapute by Francisco Soc Rodrigo. Now, you may have remembered Sapula Sapute. Um, yeah, it's all about Sabong. Fra that is Francisco. That was written by Francisco Soc Rodrigo. And then we have Bulaga, written by Clodualdo del Mundo. And then we have Julian Cruz Balamaceda. And um, the place that he had written, Sino pa kayo dahil sa anak higante ng patay. Now, as you may have noticed in all of these plays, it is always in Filipino, right? Okay, so all of these plays are in Filipino because, of course, as we have already discussed, Filipinos are the only allowed language to be used in writing okay no more questions all right now let's proceed to another forms of literature we have short stories during the japanese colonial period we have notable writers during this period and these are the following Brigido Batung Bakal uh, and the short story that he wrote Pula Ang Kulay ng Dugo at Iba Pang Kwento now we have Macario Pineda, Ang Suyuan sa Tubigan. Serafin Gingindo, Liwayway Arceo, Narciso Ramos, and VM Gonzalez. Alicia Lopez Lim, Ligaya Perez, and Gloria Guzman. These are the notable short story writers during the Japanese colonial period. The best writing in 1945 were selected by a group of judges composed of the following people. We have Francisco Icaciano, Jose Esperanza Cruz, Antonio Rosales, Clodoaldo del Mundo, Teodoro Santos. And together, election, the following got three prizes. These are the stories. So the first prize is Narciso Reyes with his Lupang Tinubuan, second prize, Liwayway Arceo's Uhaw Ang Tigang na Lupa, third prize, and VM Gonzalez Lunsod Ngayon at Dagat-Dagatan. Now, as you may notice, each of these uh, short stories are actually, actually have one common theme, which is the love of the nation. All right, it's time for our spotlight story. All right, so our spotlight story for today is the first prize, Narciso Reyes with his Lupang Tinubuan. So our spotlight for today is Lupang Tinubuan by Narciso Reyes. Now let's find out a little bit about, a little bit about the author. This is Narciso Reyes. He is a Filipino diplomat, an author, an ambassador to the United Kingdom and other countries. He's also a teacher. He's also a journalist. And more uh, importantly, he wrote Lupang Tinubuan. And we first is, let's meet the characters of this short story. So we have Danding. Okay, just imagine that is Danding. And then Tia Juana and then Tio Goryo. And the relatives, as we will see later on. So Danding, the story is actually told in the point of view of Danding. So Danding. So Danding is traveling with Tia Juana and Tio Gorio. Tia Juana is the sister of his father. So that means Tia Juana is his aunt. Tio Gorio is the husband of Tia Juana. They are actually they are traveling to they're traveling to Malawig. Malawig is uh province in in Palawan. So they are from, as you can see in the opening of the story, let us read. So we can get to know more about the setting of the story. Ang tren ay tumulak sa gitna ng salisalimot na mga ingay. Sigawan ang mga batang nagtitinda ng mga babasahin. Tribune! Mama, Tribune! Taliba! Ubus na po! Liwayway, bagong labas. Alingaw ngaw ng mga habilinan at pagpapaalam. So, in this 
and this is the first line or this is the first paragraph of the story the first paragraph of the story tells us about the setting which is actually the train station tutuban train station now where in the world is tutuban train station now if you're going to look it up in if you're going to look it up in the in google Tuban train station is actually found in Tundo, Manila. So we can conclude that uh, Danding, Tijuana, and Tiogorio, they are, they are living in Tondo, Manila. And they were set to travel to Malawig. Later we will find out why they have to travel to Malawig, which is a province. Yes, so that is a Tutuban train station. What can you expect in Tutuban train station? So it's very busy. That's why there were Tribune, uh, Taliba, Aliwaiwai. So there were children. Uh, there were there were children selling newspaper like Tribune and Liwaiwai. Okay. Right. So let's proceed. So on their way to Malawi. So, Tia Juana said, Ang namatay ang ta ay ang tatainong mo. Pamangkin ng iyong lola asyang at pinsan namin ng iyong ama. Mabait siyang tao noong siya'y nabubuhay pa. So, on their way to Malawig, he asked questions. What does Malawig look like? And his aunt describes it to him. So, uh, Danding is very much excited to go to Malawi, even though he hasn't seen the place. And he's very excited to meet all of the people who is living there. And he's also very excited because that is the hometown of his father. Okay, so the author described Malawi as mga puno ng kawayan, mangga, niyog at akasya, mga bahay na pawit, luma na ang karamihan at sunog sa araw ang mga dingding at bubong. So we can see that is a typical barrio describes it as like a typical province that we can find. Yeah, I know some of us are living in the province where there are like a lot of trees and uh, the houses are not really concrete. It's made of uh, nipa and it's not very new. So that is how the author describes Malawi. All right, so when they got to the house, uh, when they arrived there, Danding was introduced by all of these family members. And so it says, Kairami pala niyang kamag-anak doon. Hindi mapatid-patid ang pagpapakilala ng kanyang tia Juana. So Danding was introduced to all of his relatives this is your cousin this is your aunt this is your uh this is the this is one of your relatives so on and so forth and it can be noted that Fil filipino culture is actually being highlighted when you read the story because it says you could at iti rito halik ng kamay roon Mga kamag-anak na malapit at malayo, tunay at hawa lamang, matatanda at mga bata. So it's like everyone welcomes Danding. Literally like everyone as you can see. Um, they have relatives, bata man o matatanda, children, old, everyone. And it can be noted that, um, yeah, it says halik ng kamay roon. So, um, the Filipino culture, which is the kissing of the hand of the elderly to show respect, is being shown in this uh, in this story. Okay, so Danding's father is actually sick, and we know that Danding's father is very, very sick because this is what it tells in the story. Bala na ang nagtanong kay Danding ng kung ano ang lagay ng kanyang amang may sakit at ang kanyang inang siya na lamang ngayong bumubuhay sa kanilang mag-anak. So as you can see, Danding's father is very sick and Danding's mother is the only one who's taking care of the entire family. So maybe that is one of the reasons why Danding's father and his mother was not able to go to Malawi to attend the funeral. Alright, so because they are attending the funeral, 
blending enters the room and this is what happens. Nabakas ni Dang Ding ang lapad ng noo sa mga matang hindi ganap ang pagkakapikit at sa hugis ng ilong ang bahagyang pagkakahawig ng, sa kanyang ama. Bigla siyang nakaramdam ng awa at lungkot. So, in here, Danting is actually describing when he looked at the coffin. He looked at the man who is dead in the coffin. So, even though he wasn't able to meet the man, but he felt, he felt sympathetic. He felt awa, he felt lungkot, he felt very sad. Pumunta si Danting sa bukid sa may likuran ng bahay. So, it's because it's the setting is in the barrio, right? And it's very common that in the barrio you can find like fresh air and a lot of trees in the backyard. So he goes into the backyard and he finds Lolo Tasho. And they had a conversation because Lolo Tasho was um, was noticing that Danding is alone so he asked why are you alone and so Danding said may mga sandali pong kailangan ng tao ang mapag-isa and then Lolo Tasha was sa- saying kanyan din siya kung magsalita bata pa'y magulang na ang isip so siya there is referring to Danding's father so um, Danding is now very curious about his father nasaksihan mo po ba ninyo ang kanyang kabataan so he asked and Lolo Tasho was like nasaksihan Napah- napahalakak si Lolo Tasho ang batang ito ako ang nagbaon ng inunan ng ama mo ako ang gumawa ng mga una niyang laruan naulila agad siya sama so in here we can find or we can it can be implied that Lolo Tasho is the one who took care of Danding's father when he was still young because Danding's father was actually um, died very early. All right, so Lolo Tasha narrated how his father had been when he was still there, how his father wrote a poem to a girl and got caught being with that girl and how that's the reason why he escaped to Manila. So, uh, Dan Ding's father was actually caught be with a girl, being with a girl, and that's the reason why he fled to Manila. All right, and so um, since they were there to attend a funeral, it's time for them to actually uh, bury the deceased person. So this is what it says. Wala na ang nalalabi kundi ang paghulog at pagtatabon sa kabaong. Ngunit na huling sandali ay binuksang muli ang takip sa tapat ng mukha ng bangkay upang ito'y minsan, minsan pang masulyapan ng mga nauli. So this is the part where you have to okay, this is the part where you need to open the kabaong or the coffin for the for the bereaved family to take a look at or one last glance and that's when it hit him nilunod ang kanyang puso ng matinding dalamhati at ang malabong pakiramdam na siya man ay dumaranas ng isang uri ng kamatayan now take note that Danding doesn't personally know this this relative of him but he felt like he is very sad at that moment and he felt like parang para na rin siyang namatayan. So, um, it can be deduced that that Danding is a very sympathetic person because even if he doesn't know the person that was dead, he felt empathy for the people who was left. And uh, Danding doesn't really like crowds, so he went on at pumunta siya sa bukid, you know? at the back, the backyard. So, ang kapayapaan ng bukid ay tila kamay ng isang inang humaplos sa nag-iinit na noon ni Danding. Huminga siya ng malalim, umupo sa lupa, at pinikit ang mata. So, I know there are times na parang ganito din kayo, di ba? That you felt like, I just want to be alone with the nature, and you felt like 
you feel at ease and at peace even if you had a lot of problems so that is what Danding is feeling right now it's because he was able to see the very beautiful view of the mountain so he took a deep breath and closed his eyes unti-unti siyang pinanawan ng lumbay at agam-agam at natiwasay ang pagod niyang katawan sa kapirasong lupang ito na siyang sinilangan ng ama niya ay napanatag ang kanyang puso So, that's when he realized kung bakit ang pagkakatapon sa ibang bansa ay napakabigat na parusa at kung bakit ang mga nawawalay na anak ay sumasalunga sa bagyo at paha makauwi lamang sa inang bayan. Kung bakit walang atubiling naghain ng dugo si Narizal at Bonifacio. So, it was at this moment that he realized that there's no place like home. As you can see, Rizal and Bonifacio is our heroes, right? And they have fought over the freedom of the Philippines. So this uh, this story is low-key. No, not low-key, but actually the story is telling us that um, we should fight for... We should fight for the freedom of our motherland. Uh, right? And no place like home yes so a lot of our heroes has sacrificed whatever they have for the freedom that we had for today and that is what Dending felt that we also have to sacrifice our freedom because Philippines as Benigno uh, Nino Aquino said is worth dying for So lessons, no matter where you are, you should always look back at your roots. And love for the nation does not happen by chance. It ha- it needs to be cultivated. Just like Dan- what Dan Ding had experienced, he needs to go to the place where his father lived for him to understand that he loves this land. All right. That's it, the end. And I hope you like our spotlight story for today. I'm, yeah, for credit, special thanks to all the people who made and released these awesome resources for free. You can find my presentation at Slides Carnival. It's free. It's downloadable. You can download their template and photographs, start up stock photos or Google. I have just Googled my photographs and the resources also slide share that net take the k padua japanese period of philippine literature thank you so much for the resources and like share subscribe any questions you can find me at facebook.com slatonjit or you could email me at bjelmy at gmail.com and i would be very happy to share with you this uh, powerpoint presentation if you like it so you can email me and then i will be glad to send this to you this powerpoint presentation all right so that's it for uh, the philippine colonial japanese colonial literature do you have any questions none right so i'll see you next time bye